Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on troubleshooting motherboards, RAM, and CPUs. Today we're going to talk about common symptoms of problems and some troubleshooting tools that you can use to solve those problems. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. We're going to begin by talking about common symptoms of problems. Now, these symptoms that we're talking about today are ones that are caused by motherboard, RAM, and or CPU issues as a general rule. And the first one we're going to talk about is unexpected shutdowns. Here, the most likely cause is heat. Check the ventilation and clean out the fans. Also check for fan operation. System lockups. Guess what? The most likely cause is heat. Check the ventilation and clean out fans. Also check for fan operation. Now we move on to postcode beeps. This is where you get a series of beeps when you're, when you're booting up the system. Now the most likely cause is, guess what? We don't know. Because each manufacturer defines their own beep codes. So you need to refer to system documentation to determine the actual cause for the postcode beeps and or get a postcode card. If you boot up the system and you got a blank screen, guess what? The most likely cause is your onboard graphics. This is particularly prevalent in systems that have onboard graphics and an add-on card. And what happens is the cord that goes from the monitor to the PC is plugged into the wrong port. If your system isn't keeping time or date correctly, the most likely cause is a low CMOS battery. The CMOS battery is the timekeeper for the system and retains user adjustable settings in BIOS as well. So if your system attempts to boot to the incorrect device, the most likely cause is an incorrect BIOS setting. BIOS has the incorrect boot order setting. You need to correct that to get it to boot to the correct device. If your system is suffering from continuous reboots, that can be hardware or software related. If you've just installed new hardware, then the most likely cause is a wrong driver. If you haven't just installed new hardware or it is the correct hardware, then the most probable cause is an update to the operating system or an application that you use or an application that executes on boot up. Absolutely no power? Well then guess what? The most probable cause is the power supply. Check the plugs for the power supply. Make sure they're plugged in where they're supposed to be. And then check the settings for the power supply voltages. Suffering from overheating? Then the most likely cause is either poor ventilation, inadequate cooling, or your system has been overclocked. Those are three things that you can look at that are highly probable causes of overheating. Loud noises, the most likely cause is dirt. As fans become dirty, they need to work harder to cool, which will increase the noise level of your system. If your PC is suffering from intermittent device failure, well then the most likely cause, well, this can be a heat issue, but it also might be caused by bad RAM. If the ventilation is okay, then run the memory diagnostic utility on your next reboot to see if you have some bad RAM. How about when your fans spin, but there's no power to other devices? Well, then your most likely cause is that there's no power to the CPU. This is caused when the power regulator on the motherboard has gone bad. That's because the fans don't require the CPU to run, where every other device really does require the CPU to have power. Have smoke escaping from your PC? Well, your most likely cause is the power supply. It's possibly a short in the power supply or the wrong voltage setting on this power supply. In either case, you've got a problem. How about a burning smell or sparks? Guess what? That's also most likely caused by the power supply. It's closely related to smoke. Another possible cause is a short caused by nicks or cuts in the wiring insulation. How about the blue screen of death? The most likely cause is either a faulty motherboard or RAM if it's not an other hardware related issue. Now, as a general rule, electronics don't like it when you let the smoke out of them. Remember, try and keep the smoke inside of your PC. 
Now let's talk about some troubleshooting tools that you can use to troubleshoot motherboard, RAM, and CPU issues. The first tool is a screwdriver. Why? Because it allows you access to inside the case so that you can look at the motherboard, the CPU, and the RAM. A multimeter is another awesome tool for troubleshooting these items. It allows you to check and make sure that everything's getting the appropriate voltage. I would recommend using a fairly high quality multimeter as not all multimeters are created equal. Another tool that you may want to consider acquiring is a power supply tester. This simulates the load on a power supply and displays voltages. It makes it easy to test a power supply when you're having problems. It's also useful for testing a power supply when you don't have a motherboard. A postcard is another handy addition. It's an adapter card that plugs into a PCI or PCIe slot. It displays a code that will point out when and where a post failure occurs. Some motherboards have postcards built into them, but not all of them. And you might want to consider getting one so that you can learn the codes and be familiar with them. Now that concludes this session on troubleshooting motherboards, RAM, and CPUs. We talked about common symptoms or problems, and then some troubleshooting tools that you can use to help resolve those problems. Now, on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm sure I'll do another one real soon.